Talking, talking with famous people. Hello, I'm host Eric. Welcome to Talking with Famous People. John is a, I believe, currently a student at. Uh, yes, uh, Cal State University, Monterey Bay. Monterey Bay, and you are studying something in the realm of computing, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, uh, computer science with a concentration in uh, data sciences and uh, data mining. You're not. You're not just talking about like, for example, I want to go through uh, the the school enrollment for for this school and find out how many students have been absent this many times. You're not talking about that kind of data uh, stuff. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's not, it's not uh, issues of uh, relational databases like you'd see commonly, you know, with computers. Um, it's more complicated and larger sets of uh, data that you need to, you know, extract more complex meaning from. So not not just uh, <clears throat> we need this field in this column, but we need to know how this field in this column, then this field in this column, way over here, relate to each other and how. How that relationship changes over time those kinds of problems so would you say that one of the issues with which you'd be tasked potentially would be to address what one might call modularity and can you explain uh, how you would understand that term or what you what you would understand that, that to mean uh, well, with modularity, uh, you can have, like, the, uh, the sense that you can, you know, put certain things together, and then you can have, like, a more programmer's sense of modularity. So, um... Can you describe the difference? I, 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 w I would like to hear you explain that, because I don't understand what... I didn't... I haven't made that distinction before myself. I want you to clarify that a bit. Yeah, so when, like, you hear the word modularity from somebody who's, like, in uh, marketing or evangelism or whatever uh you're gonna get the definitions more like oh yeah we have uh, this product here and it become a module of this product or whatever else but when you're in programming you, you don't really talk about that sense of modularity what you're talking about is uh more how uh, certain data can stack on top of each other so if you're talking in a purely numerical sense you know you have the modulo operation which is a uh, remainders and you can you know you can count multiples of uh, certain sequences and you know go on that way or you can uh, take that arithmetic operator and apply the different kinds of objects to see how they relate to each other that they have some kind of correlation you know in a more simple sense and then you know stack up the complexity from there so this is basically a, a you're talking about a massive conditionality web, right? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and you're saying you want to understand the correlative relationships between different occurrences of natural language, for example, on the mm -hmm. internet, such that we can understand how those, in turn, will correlate to human behaviors on the internet or will correlate to I mean what's the end goal I guess what's the end goal yeah like what like when you are doing this this work when you're thinking about this stuff mm -hmm. do you do you pull it out of the system itself ever to think about it or do you just think about it within the system for example you might conclude that I need I need the functionality X within the system in order to mm -hmm. Uh, make it more efficient or make it more robust or whatever. But mm -hmm. that's a different explanation than we need functionality X because we want to achieve we want to achieve increased understanding of how natural language Y relates to behavior Z in human beings. See? Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. So, yeah, what explained is what I'm looking for. So uh, in, increased meaning, uh, increased relationships between uh, different sets of data, that's that's what I'm looking for. So, you know, like how, like you said, 
uh, certain patterns of natural language would uh, incite certain behaviors. That's definitely a complex issue that I'd look at. Right. Of course, as usual, being an armchair philosopher, I haven't done any actual, <laughs> I haven't done any actual yeah. researching on this or anything. But uh, it would seem to me that certain approaches to argumentation that are going to be manifest yeah. in specific phraseologies, that those would correlate strongly with a number of other things, because ultimately, how one argues is very reflective of how one thinks. And if you are a person like me who, who is fond of the cognitive function model, then obviously I think you'd be able to identify be personality type, correlate personality type with argumentation vector like that, you know? A hypothesis. Yeah, I, I yeah, um, yeah. Hypothesis. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, uh, I was... This last semester that I just finished a school, uh, I'm still going through like the uh, basic requirements for uh, general ed and all that. And um, one of the classes I had to take was uh, discrete mathematics, which is uh, essentially more of like the math involved with uh, the kind of thing that I do, you know, like programming and all that. Uh, we talked about um, relationships and probability, and uh, yeah, you can you can determine outcomes from said information. You know, but then how do you go back from those outcomes to determine what's in information you had in the beginning? Yeah, that's that's a that's an application of modulo that we learned from that class. Reverse but, uh, engineering, you know, going forward and backwards through a uh, you know trees of outcomes essentially. Interesting. What I find yeah. fascinating about the whole field, of course, is it it's where causality is real. <laughs> you know, when you're dealing with with what I call time objects, that is to say, stuff that exists only when you, only through the application of energy does it persist, right? What I'm talking about, which is basically any sort of digital object, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. When, when dealing with those things, conditionality is rock solid. Causality is rock solid. You can, you can yeah. reduce everything to single causes or, you know, relationships of causality that are distinct and, and definite. And uh, yeah. then, and, and, but of course, causality, that whole idea uh, of causality is drawn from the physical world where it really doesn't work at all. You know, you know what I mean? Because it, it, we, we try to reduce things in the physical world to single causes. And the fact that we can come up with examples where we can't do that and we result in what's called causal overdetermination, yeah. which is like if if you have two pills, two Tylenol pills, right? You're about to take two Tylenol pills. Yeah. Um, I sneak up when you're back at turn and exchange one a Tylenol pill for a cyanide pill. And Bob does the same thing with the other one. And you take both pills. Who caused your death? Right? So causality yeah. doesn't work that way um, in the real world because there's no controlling the input vectors, you know? <laughs> You can't you can't limit the yeah, possible yeah. actions of a given human being to X and Y, but it works perfectly in a, in a time only world in a digital world. I think that's uh, I think it's neato. Hold on, John. Let me stop this. We're gonna take a one minute break so I can stop this. So I have smaller files so I don't have to deal with a massive file. Okay, I'm just gonna stop both of these uh, okay. and restart them. Okay. Talking, talking with fame. 